Hi, in this video I want to show you what I found along the Pecos River. Uh, it's pretty spectacular. Um, I just happened upon these accidentally when I first saw some of these features. It looked like maybe some sort of modern gravel or mining operation, but then when I zoomed in closer you could see that there were all this uh, furrows, deep furrows with basins in the bottom. Zoom back out, you can see there's quite a bit going on here. Uh, show you there's some canals that run into the area. One forms a glyph and then sort, sort of towards the middle bottom there's a whole bunch of these rectangular basins or reservoirs. Zoom out, you can see it's quite large goes for quite a ways. More of those basins below the other ones. The whole thing in this picture I think represents a large bird with a beak at the top basin to the left. Um, zoom back in on this guy. Looks to be a, some sort of figure with uh, pointy ears and a kind of a flattened nose, a goblin looking thing. They often had characters that look funky like this. Uh, he's reaching out and looks like he's pinched between his fingers this other figure hanging down that looks also like a rabbit but kind of if you look closer you see all those dark areas are actually uh, birds, bird glyphs and other things. Uh, zoom back out you can see again in negative color kind of looks different and the thing he's holding kind of starts to look like a really long uh, serpent wound around a staff or something uh, and then you can see a whole bunch of other glyphs and there it is again you can look at the little dark areas from this angle you can see look like birds and stuff so again, this is how it's made, these furrows with basins in the middle, the dark areas, the light areas are actually built up hills in between, could have planted in the bottoms and on the hills and then watered, watered the tops of the hills from the basins below. If you look here, this looks like a boar running off to the right with his head to the right. Uh, if you flip that around and look at it, the head actually looks like some sort of phoenix bird. Again, zoom out, see what I'm talking about. The whole thing looks like a big bird. Kind of turn it around, look at it differently. You can see all the disturbed area in the middle where they weren't quite done. The center right, you can see a part of a tail of something they were still doing. and. Looks like maybe a lizard or iguana head with uh, wings or something. I'm not quite sure. And here again, looking at the rows of how they are built. Um, see the ditch running along, along the outside and another ditch in the upper right hand corner. And in another video I said that I was wondering if the people here were related somehow to the Mesoamericans that occupied the Mississippi River Valley and over in Louisiana you've got the same kind of glyphs that appear to be made with these same deep deep rows and just to show you something really cool there's a dog with a eagle or bird on his back and that's up in Arkansas. So let's go back to the area along the Pecos and there's uh, several of these reservoir glyphs, quite large. Uh, I wouldn't have even thought these were glyphs except that I found those same rows of furrows again. Zoom out, you can see it's kind of like uh, the lake forms a guy's head looking to the left. Zoom farther out. And I think in the, kind of in the shadows there, he had an arm coming out holding one of these uh, Mesoamerican clubs with obsidian blades in it. And then of course, I think there's glyphs everywhere out here.
turn it around the other way, look at the bottom, the reservoir seems to form a face to the right with a headdress going up towards the top, flip it around the other way, and it looks kind of like a, maybe a parrot beaked fish. So find another one of these reservoirs, it's like a cat looking thing facing to the right with a, with a horn. Zoom in on that, look at the, the nose and the upper teeth. They're formed by these canals, almost like aqueducts that run out to these basins in the bottom of the lake. So when the lake's dry, you can water your fields from these basins. And when it's full, they're underwater. There's a better picture. And there's one of, that's underwater now. Or, in this picture and if you again if you go over and you look around the Mississippi River Valley and the lower part of Louisiana you got almost the same kind of pattern of canals running out into the lakes and the lowlands and they have basins on the end of them so just to show you a quick thing here I was going to show you how these change through the years and they can form uh, kind of different looking glyphs depending on how much water is in them. Uh, go to another one. Again at the top, see this, those rows, those agricultural features. Flip it around this way, looks kind of like a beaked guy pointing his wing to the right. And then another one looks like they were still working on it. Um, look at the furrows, they're not done. They don't, they're not all with the basins in the middle and the, the piles in between. And here's one that looks uh, quite a bit older. And it's one of the most northerly features like this that I found. Now let's go on and look at some agricultural features, some fields. There's all this contour fields all around this area. There's thousands and thousands of acres of this everywhere. Take some more looks at these. Contour fields everywhere. And if you look at this one, it looks really old and the ground there is really bare. And I was just going to mention that if you go look on Google Earth just about anywhere in the southwest where you have this kind of bare ground, it's probably going to be a, a prehistoric agricultural feature. And they also had round fields like this within a square border. These are not historic borders and fields this is all the prehistoric grid pattern and these are prehistoric fields there's some round ones there and then there's probably were two prehistoric fields that got reused here and that's what's happening again see another couple of these old old looking round fields all this gridded off land it was all done prehistorically Let's take a look at some more. That's this uh, offset rectangle pattern that I saw over in South Texas. Um, just tons and tons of these grids. And you see at the top grids going the other way. This is all prehistoric. Again, look at all these gridded off areas here. You can see canal running out of the bottom. Um, this is all the prehistoric land use pattern. Here's some more. And usually these kind of features will have one of those reservoirs somewhere within the boundaries of each one of these squares. They're fed by canals. Again, the, the roads, the 
pipelines, just about everything that you see that modern people have done follows these prehistoric land use patterns. And that shows it again. And they're also probably forming glyphs. As you can see here, another reservoir appears to be a bird glyph on the right. Uh, again, all the gridding you see there, that's the prehistoric uh, field boundaries. There's some more of it. You can see some glyphs in there. And just about all this land, it's all agricultural. And one last look at some other types of features, these hills that have sort of this natural banding and contouring to them. I think they were um, enhancing that and uh, running water down the terraces and growing on the terraces. And if you look here, there's some canals that run off of them, uh, some pretty good contour ditches running around and then again you see the bare soil where it's uh, the nutrients of the soil have been sucked out of this from for hundreds of years of agriculture so so i hope after viewing this video uh, people start to get the idea that basically all the land out here in the southwest was used prehistorically for farmland and that all our modern land use patterns that we think were our historic ancestors, uh, it's not. It's, it's the prehistoric land use patterns that our, pre that our historic ancestors were reusing.